Hi, I'm Maddie Hockaday, also known as the Anne of this relationship. And I'm Holly, the Leslie. We love Parks and Rec. We love behind the scenes. And we love each other. This is literally the best Parks and Recreation rewatch show. We're your park pals. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. Hello! Hi, Holly. <laughs> it's so good to see your face. <laughs> it's good to see yours. Okay. Um, rock show. I am so excited. Here we go. About this episode. <laughs> Me too. I think this is my favorite episode so far. Got a lot more to go, but yeah. No, totally. Out of all the ones that we've done so far, this is my fave. Uh, I just think it like wraps everything together really, really nicely. Okay. I have, um, a bit of a recap moment and, but the recap isn't really about the last podcast episode. It's more so about like as a whole, I'll just say it. I, it's kind of sad and bad news, but I found that Peacock changed their subscription and the first epi- no, first season of Parks and Rec and the second season of Parks and Rec are free, but season three and up, you have to pay. Oh, I know it's, it's so sad. Real sad. I think they <sighs> did the same thing with The Office as well. So it's just mm-hmm. a bum fest all around for our favorite NBC shows. I know because I was thinking that the um, Parks and Rec we had said was all free, but yeah, they just recently changed it, I think, because they knew our podcast was starting. (laughs) (laughs) They were prepared. Right. Um, But I will say, okay, I have a bit of a tip for you and I'm not going to say, I think it's totally legal, but (laughs) (laughs) but just in case it isn't, I'm not going to like spell it out for you. But that is the case for Netflix, like that, you know, Netflix used to have The Office and Mm -hmm. Parks and Rec and all that stuff. That is only the case to not have those shows if you are in America. I am just going to leave it at that if you are technologically advanced. And Maddie, if you don't get it now, I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> I got but you. If you are <laughs> in America, you will not get those shows on Netflix for free. But if you are not in America, winkity wink, those will show up in your Netflix. Because America is not great right now with the Netflix shows. <laughs> yeah. They've got the Netflix originals. Honestly, I think that saved them, right? If they didn't have mm-hmm. Netflix original shows, I think they'd be in a little bit of a deeper waters. And that's not my opinion. That's I'm stealing my boyfriend's business brain. But (laughs) no, (laughs) I agree. I agree. (laughs) No, I totally agree. If they didn't have their own, I mean, now, I mean, and that's the thing that sucks about it is that they're the ones that started this whole streaming mess. So like, I don't even think that uh, Warner Brothers or Peacock or whatever the hell would have their streaming service if it wasn't for Netflix, like taking everything. (laughs) So yeah. They started yeah. a, a revolution of how we mm-hmm. watch TV, for sure. And I mean, I don't know if you remember this, but just a little flashback for people. Netflix used to be, you went on the Netflix website, you chose three movies you wanted to, or you could choose TV shows, but they would only send you one disc of the TV show at a time. And mm-hmm. then you would get it, watch it, send it back. When they got it, then the next movie on your queue would come Mm -hmm. to your house so it used to be a whole thing and now it's just at the at our fingertips we can literally watch anything on netflix so um it's crazy how far they've come yeah and i remember the netflix commercials too where like they'd have a bunch of characters like riding the bus to take the bus to somewhere and it was like about netflix because you could literally rent whatever you wanted to rent uh and have them sent to your house and that's also that reminds me when you were explaining it about how in the office when kelly is like when they're taking a bet on kelly (laughs) (laughs) and then kelly is explaining how netflix works to ryan so funny oh goodness gracious but anyway, okay, so yes, we are at season one, episode six. Oh my gosh, finale. We're here. And it is called Rock Show, directed by Mike Schur, who we all know and love, of course, and written by Norm Hiscock. Norm is the one who was on the wall of creepy men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that when you're looking at the city council pictures that Leslie was standing in front of a couple episodes back that says follows her chest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he has written a bunch of Parks and Rec episodes, uh, as we know, but he was also a producer on the show of, you know, of Parks and Rec, and he also produced King of the Hill and SNL, and I swear, all of these people, these writers, directors, have all worked on the same thing at some point, like King of the Hill also, uh, Greg Daniels worked on, and I believe, did Conan work on that too? I can't remember, but either way, 
uh, Norm is known from that. So in this week's commentary, though, we've got Mike Schur, Rashida Jones, Chris Pratt, Greg Daniels, uh, so superstar cast mm-hmm. in the commentary. Uh, and then Alan Yang, who is the bass player for Andy's band, comes in a little bit later in the commentary. I think he like had some appointment <laughs> or something, and then he hops in the commentary. It's really funny. But one of the first things that they say was that this was the producer's cut. So they had a lot of stuff going on um, in this, and then the actual aired version, a lot of stuff was cut out but that being said um all the stuff that they talked about that was cut out was in the peacock version that i watched Uh, so i guess peacock just like automatically went ahead and did it like that scene with ann's talking head about like if uh if leslie had a boyfriend that broke his legs or was getting his cast off i'd come but i'd probably bring less stuffed animals like that was a cut um right cut scene and they added it back in so that's good very cool Mm -hmm. i have a side comment about conan o'brien I don't know if he worked on King of the Hill, but he did work on SNL. Yes. Him and Greg Daniels were writing partners. Right. And that's how I think he got that uh, little cameo in the office. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so, too. I love Conan. So he little... has a podcast, too. Oh, my gosh. He is so underrated. It's ridiculous. He really is, though. I love him. And we love watching those videos of him traveling. Oh, my God. So anybody who loves, like, international travel and loves, like, Conan O'Brien and tall redheaded men Mm -hmm. um they're very funny because he kind of just jumps into a completely new culture and tries to learn things but he also you know he has his comedic side that he kind of brings out and sometimes you're like oh I don't know if I would do that in a different country but he's like (laughs) out there doing it so like just to give you a taste he goes to Australia and he takes like lingo lessons like how do they say in Australia and it's just it's very funny Mm -hmm. Yeah, and most some of those I don't know if it is now, um, but some of those were I watched it on Netflix. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Co- what is it called? Like Conan Goes Abroad or some shit like that? I don't remember. Something like that. Yeah, but Netflix needs to pay us. We've mentioned them so much today already. I know. Already. Uh, I swear they don't um, even have Parks and Rec. <laughs> some of these podcasts uh, have the uh, sponsors be like Peacock is a sponsor on some of these podcasts, and I swear I'm gonna get them to sponsor us somehow, some way, even if they give Do us it. a little bit. Like I am, t- and then we're gonna get a subscription. Like Sean actually said that he was like, "Yo, you guys should get a subscription, like anyway, because we talk about it all the time." Yes. So, are we ready to start this show? We are ready. I'm ready. I love this cold open so much. Me too. Do you want a summary, though, before we begin? Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Give me the summary. I'm okay, so let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to knock knock out my, my job I know. Here. I got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Andy is finally getting his leg casts off, but Anne finds out that they could have come off two weeks ago, which leads to turmoil in the Perkins Dwyer household. Mm. To celebrate the, this milestone, Andy invites everyone at uh, City Hall to his band's concert, uh, Scarecrow Boat. Leslie can't make the concert due to an important meeting with a city official from Eagleton, which we soon find out was a blind date set up by Leslie's mom that Leslie is not thrilled about. Mark discovers he's the seventh wheel at the concert and tries to swoon Anne, who is still upset with Andy. After a bus date with the city official, Leslie hangs out with Mark uh, at the pit, which leads to our season finale of Mark falling into the pit. Full circle. We all fell in the pit. We all fell in the pit. (laughs) Probably one of the greatest songs ever written. Just going to put it out there. The DVD uh, extra like features, bonus features has a music video Mm. of this song. And it's all, it's just all cut scenes of them either falling into the pit him singing the pit song or whatever and like just random ass little scenes but it's so stupid and funny and i i maybe i'll post a little clip or something yes. on our instagram <laughs> that would be amazing i want to see it oh my gosh oh my god so i have to tell you that just because the pit has been brought up now there's mm-hmm. like this huge dirt patch across the street from our apartments and we take the dogs walking out there because it's just free and we don't really run into people and they um, they like the open space. But we call it the pit. And yes! So, and so now we sing that to our dogs whenever we're like, we're going down to the pit. We're <laughs> like, we sing that to Fenway and Cubs yeah. and whenever we take them potty. So. <laughs> oh my God. I love that so much. I'm ready for the cold open. Now. All right. Here we go. Cold open, which you are right. This this cold open is amazing. And I understand why you were excited about it. Um, (laughs) My first question is, though, like, right, we're outside the hospital. We're kind of being told, hey, 
this is what's happening. Like we're going in to get Andy's cast off, which I'd like to point out that this is the first cold open we have that actually plays into the storyline. Yes, that was literally what I wrote. I love that it opens on an actual story and like goes with the episode. It's not standalone. Like you don't have to, you know, have it apart from the actual episode. It, it really picks up like an actual documentary. Right. Yeah, I really like that about this. And then do you happen to know where this was filmed? I'm wondering if they used a real hospital or did they have set design? No, you know, I didn't. I looked up where where it was and I couldn't find anything on it. So if anyone else knows, that would help us out. But uh, even though I know that's like technically our job, but at the same time, like we're in this together. So yes, <laughs> I'll keep researching it. It looked like a real um, hospital or it looked like at least like some kind of uh, parking garage but yeah I couldn't find any notes on where this actually was that's fair yeah also where did Tom get that stethoscope and why are you putting it on Leslie's boob <laughs> and it's so inappropriate <laughs> like this whole scene I'm just like how has he not been fired or ha- how has somebody not filed like sexual harassment against him yet oh totally 100 percent. it's crazy Yeah. And also it's like they're doing that whole thing of Tom and that Tom and Leslie always do where Tom says something that's like completely sarcastic and stupid. And Leslie takes it seriously. Like, no, they're not like my (laughs) your boobs are dead. (laughs) Like you don't need to respond with a real comment. (laughs) (laughs) No, they're not. Whatever. (laughs) The documentary crew is not worried that your boobs are dead. Right. That's not a thing. Also, she got bangs and they look so good. Yes, I love how she, I, I love, I love how her look um, transforms, mm-hmm. right? I think she just gets more attractive as the series goes, honestly. 100%. She's getting, <laughs> like, she's coming into her own, I feel. Yeah. I have to say about Tom, and this is, it's just, it's sleazeball Tom, right? But, like, I have girlfriends that I work with or that I know in town and I know you that I'm just like, I would not walk up and just lay my hand on their boob. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's like, yeah, I just what the balls on this guy. I know to do that to his boss. Yeah, that's the that's the kicker. It's like this is your female boss and you're just super right. comfortable. Oh, my gosh. I do love that line, though. Uh, the oh, my gosh, your boobs are dead. <laughs> I think that was really well. It's it's really well delivered. And I think it's really well written. Like it's just kind of short and to the point. Oh, 100 percent. I love that. This is our first intro to Dr. Harris, by the way. It's so um, nice to see him, like, and how he came in. So, apparently, I looked him up. Apparently, he was born in Nashville, the actual real-life fella. Oh, nice. And he actually studied music and drama, and he was an award-winning swimmer. He was a junior Olympian in swimming, which is gnarly. I know that you like the swimming sport, the sport of swimming. Uh, (laughs) And then I saw in uh, IMDb that he played a character named Dennis in Phyllis's wedding in the office, and so I re winded and I like paused at every time they had a crowd and I don't remember seeing him anywhere so maybe they filmed something and then they cut it out that could very well be a possibility right. uh, but then I so side note this is really a little bit random um, but when I went back to watch the office uh, Phyllis's wedding to like check for Dr. Harris Phyllis says that she put Michael in her wedding to get six weeks off for her uh, honeymoon and I was like what? Six weeks? That is so much. That's two whole months, basically. That's what most women get for maternity leave, isn't it? I, yeah, I think so. Or, or some pe- yeah, some something. jobs. Uh, legally, I think it's far less than that. But, like, yeah, most women take off at least two months or so. Um, but I was yeah. like, <laughs> I guess that's why you would put Michael in your wedding if you do get that much off. I was like, damn. There's so much risk, though. <laughs> like... Oh yeah! There is oh yeah! So much risk to reward uh, for putting Michael in your wedding in that choice. Yeah, yeah, which it's, we saw. Yeah. <laughs> yes, which sometimes that episode is more cringy to me than Scott's Tots. You can fight me on that. Anyone can fight me on that. But there are just moments in that where you're like, Oh my god! Oh, Scott's Tots is the best though. Um, I was going to ask you: Have you have you ever had a cast, and was it similar to this? Because I've never had a cast. Uh, good question. I've had a boot, mm. and I'm not saying about in a Canadian accent. A boot. <laughs> I've had, <laughs> I have, I, um, so it's really funny. My brother and I got injured quite a bit as children. Mm-hmm. Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, and so my brother, he jumped off a, like, a really little tiny, like maybe four foot tall plastic playset we had in the basement. Mm-hmm. He jumped off that and broke his foot. Mm. 
and he got a boot on his on his leg and like three days later I was at school and I was hobbling out of the school and like my mom was fully convinced that I was putting on a show because I was jealous of my brother (laughs) getting attention (laughs) but uh sorry mom that I'm telling this story I love you and you're a good mom yes yes (laughs) Um, you are she she beats herself up about this but so finally she takes me to the doctor and I had sprained my knee and and broke my ankle Mm. going down the fire pole at the on the play set on the playground because my my foot got hooked around the pole but my body kept spinning and so it broke my ankle and like pulled my knee pretty far out of spot out of place so I was in a I was in a boot for about the same amount of time as my as my brother so we were the two hockaday kids just walking down the street with boots on our legs at the same time that is crazy do you remember getting stuff stuck in it like Andy has no, because that's the thing is like both that and when I broke my elbow as well, I was just in, I was in like boots and like a brace that you could mm. take off. So yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't get stuff stuck in that. My brother okay. has had one though, and his had like dirt. He did not have a little army men or an iPod. <laughs> he had like, it had like, you know, like lint and other stuff that could easily get stuck in there from clothing or whatnot, but nothing oh as big God. as Andy. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross that uh, Leslie wants to keep the uh, cast as a symbol. I was really waiting for her to say that it smelled because she was holding it up to her face so close. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's so gross. Like, I almost want to vomit <laughs> when I watch that because it's not pleasant. Like, you also have to think about he ha- he kept it on two weeks past. Right. What you're supposed to. Well, so um, little side note, uh, backstory about these casts. So um, apparently, according to the commentary, it took a very long time to get those casts on and off. It was like, you know, you hear those stories of people sitting in the makeup chair for hours and hours on set. Like, that's mm-hmm. what it was for these casts. And you can kind of see they did a really good job because, and I think that some of it was a little realistic in the sense where, like, you can kind of see, like, there's a red line and, like, his skin is different color underneath the cast and stuff. Like, that was all like makeup but I think that since it was for six whole episodes that he had those casts on I think some of it was probably a little bit real um Mm. and the story of Andy so Chris Pratt on the commentary also said that the story of Andy running down the street when Lawrence steals his (laughs) boombox in that episode when he's in the pool um came from a time when actually Chris Pratt was wearing the casts on set during a break and uh someone told him that there were like some fancy ass like specialty coffees or something and he took off running so fast like in these casts <laughs> and the producers or writers or somebody saw him like obviously the cast saw him running with these casts on to, the, to crafty and so they wrote it in the show to make it make more sense <laughs> that's amazing I love that I just think Chris Pratt's comedic timing and his his physical comedy mm-hmm. is also so great Mm-hmm. And, like, I have to keep reminding myself, we weren't supposed to get him past this episode. I know. It's incredible. Yeah. This was supposed to be it for Andy, right? He and Anne break up, and then Chris Pratt is gone. Yeah. Well, and, so. like, by the end of the episode, you can kind of see it where if that was his last episode, it would have been wrapped up really neatly. But mm-hmm. I, like, his character anyway. But I was like, oh, my God. It's so wonderful how they bring him back. And Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not going to get too ahead of ourselves, but yes, that that's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I was going to say two things. Number one is that I would 100% um, bring stuffed animals if Ivan had a cast on and he was getting them off. <laughs> and I think he's going to be so. I totally would. That's something <laughs> if I, I had like. A significant other or something. <laughs> yes. No, I 100% like was thinking the same thing. I was like, oh, I would definitely bring that. Like, and I'd probably bake a cake for him. Right. And, you know, and show up and be like, Holly's boyfriend is getting his cast off. This is so exciting. <laughs> I know this has been stressful for Holly. Yeah. And right. Ivan will be very, very touched that you would do the same thing for him, even though it's <laughs> it's mostly by proxy. 
for me. Right. No, 100%. <laughs> I feel like we would definitely be bringing them mostly for each other, but like also to support the boyfriend. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> which brings That's me beautiful. to my next note when they're in the courtyard. So I'm in the courtyard now, which we can go back if we need to. But that also reminded me of when, of when Leslie uh, like stops everybody from speaking because Anne wants to make an announcement. And she's like, everybody, everybody quiet. Anne's speaking now. She wants to talk or say something. <laughs> I felt like a visceral like connection with Leslie in that moment yes. where I was like oh my god I would 1000% do that if Maddie was like making a speech even if it was just like randomly at our house or something and she needed to say something I'd be like shut up everyone <laughs> my best friend is speaking <laughs> the queen has something to say that's what I would say right. we say we're queens all the time 100% oh my uh, god I, so funny I relate with that so hard too I, ha- I even have a note about it on here because <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like we would totally do that I have to take you back to the hospital for a hot second. Okay, yes. Because it has my favorite line. Say it. Okay. They just took off Andy's cast, and they're finding all the crap that's been stuffed in there. And the line is, whoa, it's like a sweaty pinata. (laughs) I'm so excited to keep that as a tradition for the best line award. I'm so excited about that. I have to tell you, though, too, this was freaking hilarious. Mm -hmm. So... Our first episode comes out, and then we put up the voting, right? Mm -hmm. And Ivan goes, oh, I voted on that today. And I was like, aw, did you vote for mine? And he's like, which one's yours? And I told him, he's like, oh, yeah, I didn't vote for yours. (laughs) I tried to be very strategic in the sense where I didn't want them voting for you or me. I wanted them voting for the actual line. So I'm kind of glad that worked to a certain degree. It did, yes. I think okay, it definitely because well, even thank you, people Ivan, who for your vote we lost yes <laughs> <laughs> so um I have to start out with just saying holy crap that cake is amazing it's so green it is and so icingy yes and which is probably why I would love it because I love icing hmm. it's my weakness yes I remember in quick little uh <laughs> note for the uh listener when we were living together in Boston we would literally have icing cans yes. <laughs> just eat them with the spoon <laughs> uh, would we have cupcakes to put them on not always would we not have always. cake to put them on not always you know it was great drizzling some chocolate chips in there and just eating it out of the out of the thing oh my god it's so good. i don't know if my metabolism could take that anymore <laughs> I know. Well, I was seeing that too. Like, it. I have been learning that I can't have as much sugar as I used mm-hmm. to have for sure. Like, it makes my heart beat really fast, especially in like alcohols now, like wines and sugary alcohol drinks. It like does something to me now, which really sucks. I'm yeah. like, oh fuck, we're getting closer to thirty. <laughs> I know that's the thing. I feel like we've dated ourselves in this episode with our metabolism comment and like the old Netflix, and like we're still in our twenties. <laughs> No, we're not old, but yeah, I feel it. <laughs> Times have changed, though. It's okay. They have. They have. <laughs> Tom with his Lacoste shirt yes, okay. is still happening. Uh, the color? This was, I think, like a greenish, mm-hmm. limeish color, okay. right? So, I don't know. And then he also tries to, like, reach out. This doesn't have anything to do with the cost, but I did track when he, like, tries to reach out to Anne and, like, touch her arm to say, like, oh, you're welcome, because she's saying thank you for your help. And I'm like, oh, you sleazy sleaziness. Uh. I really like that when we enter season two, we start to see him round out a little bit because Mm -hmm. I think if they had kept Tom on this track, and I'm not sure if we've mentioned this before, but I think if they kept him on the same track, it would be a little bit harder for us to kind of fall in love with him. Did did you want to mention your pigeons? Because we have some good pigeon action here. (gasps) Oh my God. I have in my notes, all caps, real pigeon on the cake. Ew, but also yay. (laughs) you but also yay <laughs> so, so they say they said in the commentary that they did that on purpose they did want to have the pigeon in the cake because of you know it being outside and just looking funny but they also said that because this pigeon was in the cake uh it was leaving little green footprints like all over the place all day <laughs> you could tell where the pigeon had walked which was hilarious oh, but yes that is a real pigeon love it so Wikipedia was wrong in saying that they were all fake and Holly was right because Holly was pretty sure we had some real ones in there and it's accurate. Yeah. I'm sure there are fake ones. Like you can't keep pigeons there all day, but you know, there's definitely some real pigeons going on. (sighs) It felt very good to be validated at that moment. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Um, I love that Andy does not want to define his rock. (laughs) Like he doesn't want to define it as rock. I was so confused by that. Yeah, it's like, I don't know why you wouldn't want to, but it's like, 
that torn musician thing almost, you know? Mm -hmm. It's funny because, like, as a musician myself, and I'm sure you can relate to this as a musician, you want to be as specific as you can for what your music is so people know if they want to listen to it or just so they kind of understand what they're getting themselves into. And that Mm -hmm. can be, like, sometimes I'll say jazz, blues, folk, because I'm like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, it hits all three points. Question mark? Yeah. But, like... Yeah, I don't really want to define it. It's kind of that pretentious, like, artistic douche move kind of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Yeah, see, that's the difference. It's because, like, you and I, when we're trying to explain our music, I feel as though there's, like, multiple genres that it could fit. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that we, like, mention them all, like you said, to kind of give the other person an idea of what they're getting into. But Andy is being more of, like, I know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you to judge it because of that right (laughs) (laughs) or whatever um but like it's just interesting to me because he is so adamant that it's rock and roll in later seasons so I'm sure he's just like being a little bit you know like you said a little pretentious and whatnot about it at the beginning right and it's it's just interesting to me I think it's funny because this is going to be the first time we actually hear the band play right Mm -hmm. we've heard a recording when he's in the Mm -hmm. the bath slash kiddie pool Mm -hmm. the (laughs) bath yeah but Right when he they start playing towards the end of the episode, you're like, that is 100% rock. Like, I mm-hmm. don't know how you're having a hard time defining that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I digress. He can... Yes, and April really agrees with him yeah. and says, like, I totally get what you mean. And there's, like, a look toward him. And Rashida Jones actually in the commentary noticed it, too. Because I noticed it before. Because mm-hmm. what I do is I watch the show, like, just regularly to take my notes. And then I listen to the commentary to see what they picked up on. And Rashida Jones said the same thing in my notes that, like, she noticed that April kind of has this, like, um, I guess charming look towards Andy you know what I mean and so I don't know if it was intentional uh on April or Aubrey Plaza's part I guess but uh I thought that was really cool tracking moment yeah for sure like it's coming up so early you know and April Mm -hmm. agrees with no one so the fact that she's agreeing with Andy (laughs) right 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 um why does Anne need to tell them about the show and why can't Andy Mm, just say hey you guys I have a show like why does Anne have to do literally everything? <laughs> I really, I really hate to break this to you, Holly, but Andy is a child <laughs> and incapable of independent behavior. So yeah, that's, yeah, it's really sad. I don't know. Like, it's hard because I look at it both ways and we'll talk about this more as the episode goes around, right? Like, but she kind of enables it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because. No, you're right. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, my mom reminds me a lot. I'm bad about this because. For those of you out there that don't know, my brother now lives with me and I babied him a lot as a kid because he was he was sick a lot and he was my like best friend in the whole world. And so when he moved in, my mom was like, you cannot baby him. You cannot help him with his laundry. You cannot do You cannot put his dishes away for him. You cannot like you can't do all these things. And I think, you know, Anne's a nurse. Right. And I my job is a caretaking job. It's just kind of in your nature Mm. to get stuff done, right? And if it's that's a really good point, right? And if you're taking time off of someone else's life or you're helping them out, it's just instinct to kind of do it, right? But she's gotten to this point where it's like he can't do these things by himself anymore because Mm -hmm. he's expecting her to do it. And so now she's speaking for him, right? So it's like it's very interesting because I think that's a whole nother step, right? Me totally for me to go out and be like, telling everyone while my brother's standing right there what he's doing and what his accomplishments are like that's a you know that's should Mm -hmm. be his thing that I feel like that's a step further than doing chores for someone you know yeah so yeah and I love how we see this transition by the end of the episode it Mm -hmm. is one of my favorite Anne episodes I would say I agree and I think it kind of starts to slingshot her forward to the Anne we know and love you know Mm -hmm. who's a little bit more snarky not snarky she's got a little bit more sass no, just like independent and independence. And, yeah yeah she sticks up for herself thoughtful a little bit. on her own yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I like it I agree um when Andy is singing to the lamp <laughs> and the one where he's like I wish you were a lamp that light up when you got touched yeah. apparently that was improvised <laughs> of course it was of course it was. He said, Chris Pratt said that his friend had just bought him a lamp that lit up when you touch it. And so when he saw that lamp, he thought of that uh, lamp that he was just given as a gift and sang about it. Love it. <laughs> Which is so funny. <laughs> and he sings about the, uh, he, he sings about the sandwich too, right? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Are you turkey or ham? Are you turkey or ham? <laughs> ham. ham. <laughs> Yes, so yeah. good. I do have a uh, songwriting moment about Mouse Rat's song. Do you want to hear it? Yes, I really, really do. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I did some research, uh, and this will kind of go into the song. Uh, uh, Chris Pratt did write the Anne song, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but most of the Mouse Rat songs were written by Mark Rivers, who wrote the songs um, for Human Giant, which is a sketch show that I'm going to talk about after. But Mark Rivers is the drummer of mouse rat okay slash scarecrow boat slash just so the all of the musicians <laughs> in this are <laughs> yes oh my gosh slash all of the fucking band names but human giant is a sketch show that a season sorry was in and there was two seasons of it which like what the f i'd never heard of this show so i did a deep dive and he was in this sketch show with paul Shear, who actually plays the kablam guy in okay. parks and rec and he was also uh, i don't know if you watch 30 rock but he was one of the yep. head pages um like the you know uh, controversy one mm-hmm. with kenneth um and he also if you watch that show the league yeah. he was in that as well um and then so it was him Aziz and Rob Hubel who plays Holly's boyfriend in the office or the tent guy at rent a tent tent in Parks and Rec <laughs> so those three guys knew each other from prior to before they ever filmed anything for uh, NBC and, wow. or Greg Daniels and they did these short clips and little shows in New York uh, and they aired on MTV for two seasons like I said and that's how a season sorry got the attention of the people making Parks and Rec. So like while he did do a lot of stand up and things like that, this sketch show was something that caught the attention of the producers at Parks and Rec, which totally makes sense because everybody, you know, we all know that everybody was uh, pretty much everybody is an improviser and sketch actors and things like that. So I think that's really fascinating that like they saw a season. And I wonder, I don't I don't think it was Allison Jones that saw him. I think it was more so along the lines of Greg Daniels or Mike Schur, but maybe Allison Jones saw him too. Um, regardless, that's how they really kind of caught the attention or Aziz caught the attention of them. And um, it just really reminded me uh, of the fact that I really want there to be more sketch and improv shows on TV because there just really Mm -hmm. aren't that many. Or if there are, they are short lived. And I totally get it because with improv, you just, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes the show's going to suck. And so studios don't want to bank on that. Even if it's a phenomenal team, like you'll usually get a pretty decent show, but like you might not always get a wonderful, laughable show. Um, But that's not like really the point in my head I feel um so like which by the way you guys you should definitely check out on I think it was aired on E! Network I want to say or maybe it was Bravo I can't remember but they did um it was and by they I mean Amy Poehler Tina Fey a bunch of SNL people who were all in improv troops before you know they had their mark in in comedy or in like network comedy anyway um they did this show called Ass Cat <laughs> and <laughs> Um, Ask Cat is amazing and it's all on YouTube. It's super funny and you can really get a vibe for what it's, uh, for what improv is. But then also, um, Middle Ditch and Schwartz is a new show on Netflix with mm. John Ralphio, uh, from Parks and Rec. And, um, some people know the other, his partner, his teammate, uh, as the Verizon fella who was also on Silicon Valley. Um, they do an improv show on Netflix, which I really love. Um, so it's like interspersed here and there. And UCB has like some uh, televised stuff. but And by televised, I mean mostly on YouTube. But um, mm-hmm. And that's how um, Aziz came to Parks and Rec. Which is so cool. And it makes more sense that he was found there than doing his stand-up. So. Yeah, and that's, I think, what we were talking about, too, um, in all the episodes, too, where like they're totally cool with him just going on a rant because they know he's capable, you know? Right. <laughs> So I love that. Well, um, I'm ready to go to Leslie's mom's office if you're ready. Yes. In Leslie's mom's office, Maddie, I have to tell you because we had talked about this frequently, um, is where I noticed her. I don't know if we talked about it on the pod. Maybe we did. But um, where she has, uh, I, it was the first time that I noticed her pin that she was wearing mm. in her mom's office. And in the commentary, I don't know if I told you about this, but basically in the commentary not on this one but in one of them she said that she gets to choose the pins that she wears like she goes to she went to the costume designer like before they start shooting and she gets to choose which ones she wears so if you see them switched up or whatever she personally chose them that's really cool i like that she gets to like have that little um drop of creation in her own character it's cool yeah 
I have to say, Leslie's mom right now is frustrating me again, which is going to be the statement over and over until she kind of isn't annoying. Um, I know. But she, uh, you know, Leslie has found out about the band playing at the bar and she's like, I really want to go. I want to support Andy. I want to be with my friends. But she feels like it's the professional thing to do, right? Is, you know, like, can I reschedule? But mom's like, no, right? So she's like, well, this is the professional thing is to go to this meeting. And if I get done in time, I guess I'll stop by. But Mm -hmm. mom knows it's not a professional meeting, right? And it's important to Leslie to go to this concert. And mom's like, yeah, no, we're not rescheduling. Even though she's not Mm -hmm. even setting it up as a connection for Leslie, she's setting it up as I want my daughter to start dating. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I know she, Leslie has no warning whatsoever, I know, which that's the other reason I'm frustrated with her mom. You know, like mm-hmm. it's just she's not preparing her right. And then she's also you know, kind of pushing her own agenda almost on top of Leslie instead of, you know, being like, oh, well, my daughter would rather do this. I can just reschedule the thing for her, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, did you catch also that this is a city manager of Eagleton? And I do not think that Leslie would have taken this meeting had she known that. Agreed. Which she does know that. Uh, but it, like this is the first season, so we'll let it slide because <laughs> we didn't know that they were going to be enemies. But yeah, this scene, the one. OK, sorry. I was just reading my notes. Mm-hmm. So apparently this scene, too, um, some of it was cut. Like, so I'm glad that they kept this in so that we can understand how she gets to go with this fella. Um, because, yeah, I, I, she has no idea. <laughs> right. Yeah. She's a little blind, which I'm I'm sad about. I know. Also, I looked up what tete-a-tete means. It means private meeting between two people. So technically, you and I at this moment are having a tete-a-tete. I like that. And then by the time it airs, it will no longer be a -a tete-a-tete. But (laughs) right now, it is private. I love it. We should use that. That makes me feel fancy. We should. Um, Side note, I think that we, I don't know when this was, but he talks, uh, Mark talks about the speed bump that was taken care of. And I really, really love that line of, like, turns out what I can achieve in government can literally be measured. <laughs> oh, Mark. I feel so sad for him. I know. And the saddest part, well, not saddest, but the interesting part of this is that uh, in the commentary, they had a consultant who is a city planner in L.A., or at least they were talking about uh, how they have a consultant. You know, I always talk about how they do research about real local governments. And they said that if a lot of people complained about something, then it would definitely be realistic that a speed bump could be lowered. So they kind of wanted to, first of all, make sure that it was realistic. But secondly, they wanted to make Mark's character kind of look like he was being influenced influenced by Leslie to do good for the town and fix something nice so I like that I like that too very nice I feel Um, that Leslie's shirt is weird too by the way I'm sorry but I don't know it's like a purple blue flower shirt thing when she goes into the mom's office I don't know whatever it's not a big deal (laughs) yeah I'm just gonna say it her style in the first season not it not doing it for me yeah a little strange yeah she has she has a nice um nice outfit for the blind date Mm -hmm. yeah she looks hot Yeah, she looks great. Mm -hmm. She does her makeup. Like, obviously, she has makeup on because it's TV. But, you know, she, like, the character has makeup on when she goes on the date. She looks very nice. Right, 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 right. And I, I, either way, I mean, she always looks professional. So power to her because she always looks great. And I know that's not something that we need to be focused on. But there are just, like, I think I'm comparing it to later seasons when she has, like, a little bit more of, like, a confidence in what she's wearing. So I am just tracking that. That's all. Yeah, I love, um, there are, like, specific outfits that I really love of hers. But, like, when she has, like, a really nice pant Mm -hmm. and, like, a matching colored blouse and a blazer mm. on I'm like oh you you rocking killing it. it right now yeah I love it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um I love the three pitfalls of politics <laughs> flaky corrupt and racist wait I thought it was rapist is it rapist or racist <laughs> I think it's racist are you sure I was trying to read my writing maybe I wrote it wrong but I have racist should I check it Let's oh my god it. I well because I like like kind of flinched a tiny bit at that word now I mean I always do I guess but like so I thought it (laughs) racist would work too hold on 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 that is so funny okay okay hold on we're almost there no he says she says rapist Maddie rapist (laughs) yes she says lord in heaven (laughs) flaky corrupt or rapist (laughs) great 
Wow. <laughs> so awful. <laughs> she goes like, bad. there are a lot of pitfalls in politics, but those are the big three. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, okay. my gosh. Okay. Anyway. So, the three pitfalls of politics. There are many, but these are the main three. <laughs> Flaky, corrupt, and rapist. <laughs> So, oh lord have mercy racist well, like oh, isn't that sad where i was like racist sounds better right now but that's not right anyways right. okay neither of that's, them are yeah. good or acceptable or right. anything oh lord have mercy okay right Whew. Uh, leslie says knowledge is power and she then quotes francis bacon or it could be mary j blige <laughs> which is hilarious but just in case i mean i feel like we all know who mm-hmm. mary j blige is if you don't know who Francis Bacon is, you're not alone. I deep dived on it. Deep dove, mm-hmm. whatever the wording would be. Um, I did a deep dive. Uh, he was alive in the 15, 1600s, uh, and he was the first Viscount of St. Mm. Auburn. Wait, which one so, wrote the Star Spangled Banner? Francis Scott Key. Him. Francis oh, Scott Lord Key. Have mercy. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> So he was a um, an English statesman. He was also an attorney general and Lord Chancellor of mm. England. So fun times. Wonder why Leslie that's, knows that's who, who that is. So his name, interesting. Okay, I I I don't know, but I'm um I'm on the d- the date now. Okay, yes. Right before that is when we learned that Andy waited two weeks to take yes. his uh, to keep his casts on and this is really the only moment that I'm like not mad at Dr. Harris for a brief second because he's like telling the truth and he's very straightforward like you know no he was supposed yeah. to have his cast off for two weeks um, but he really doesn't change he doesn't really Dr. Harris doesn't have much of an arc he just is heightened I feel which I love yeah. I think that guy's great I do too I, I have to say I have like a love hate relationship with Dr. Harris because I love him I think he's hilarious I think that monotone mm-hmm. Uh, voice he's got and just like the matter of fact um attitude he has mm-hmm. i think it's wonderful but there's also times where i'm like that's just such bad bedside manner mm-hmm. or that's not what a doctor should be saying but i i just he's actually one of ivan's favorite characters because he's like i wish it was that easy to go to the doctor and just have him say nope you're good and then leave. right right no i totally get that so uh, I do have a yeah. note. I didn't write this at the beginning. Um, I had it in this, like the commentary at this point said that they did film in a real hospital, um, but they didn't say hmm. where they were shooting. So to answer our question from before, it is a real hospital, but we're just not sure which one. Okay. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so Andy is listing off all of the names of the band, and I think he there were so many, um, but I think that Ra- uh, Radwagon is <laughs> one of my faves. Uh, that's probably number three. My number one fave, uh, after Mouse Rat, of course, is Razor Dick. <laughs> Ninja oh my Dick. Gosh. Yep. <laughs> it's the third one. Uh, love those. Uh, apparently they scripted a lot of these names, but then Chris Pratt improvised some as well. I'm not sure which ones exactly he came up with. Um, but some other ones that I remember off the top of my head were Nothing Rhymes with Orange, Nothing Rhymes with Blorange. <laughs> I have them all up if you would like to hear them. Oh, my God. I love it. Okay. Here we go. A.D. and the D-Bags. Alabaster (laughs) Fart. Andy and the Budweiser Frogs. Andy and the Non-Andies. The Andy Dwyer Experience. Angel Mm -hmm. Snack. Crack Finger. Death of a Scam Artist. Department of Homeland Obscurity. Everything Rhymes with Orange. Five Mm. Skin. Four Skin (laughs) Solution. Four Skin. uh, Handrail Suicide. Jet Bat Black Pope. Love that one. Sorry, some of these are extra. I wonder if they're like taken, they were taken out later. Uh, oh, maybe. Nothing rhymes with Blorange. Nothing rhymes with Orange. Penis Pendulum. Possum Pendulum. <laughs> puppy Pendulum. Rad Wagon. There's your, uh, mm-hmm. there's your favorite. They are known as Rat Mouse when Andy doesn't play with them. That's a little bit of forward mm-hmm. trivia. Uh, mm-hmm. Scarecrow Boat. Scrotation marks, which is a great one. I love that. That one is a good uh, one. Teddy bear suicide. Oh, I like that. I one. like that one too. The Andy Andy Andys. Um, and three skin. There you go. There you go. He didn't say just the tip, did he? No, it's not on here. Let me just triple check that I didn't miss it. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. No, just okay. the tip. Okay. I don't know if he so says funny. it though. That's a good question. No. I know. I was thinking that. I don't know. But either way, um, it's really funny, too, because this is a little bit of a random situation, but something that I equated it to. So I'm a huge Tom 
uh, Tom Petty fan, if you don't already know. Yes. And his first band, before they were the Heartbreakers, they started in Gainesville, Florida, where he's from, and they were called Mud Crutch. Oh. <laughs> and oh, no. Mike Campbell, well, I'm not laughing at them because I love them. Right. I am a hu- I stand Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, but Mike Campbell, who was the guitarist for Tom Petty, uh, now has a band, um, which is really great. And honestly, if you're feeling nostalgic for Tom Petty, I feel like you should listen to this band because it's it's great, number one, but it sounds very similar to Petty. Um, his voice sounds very similar, too, which is interesting. But they are called the Dirty Knobs. <laughs> Wow. It's not, I'm not making this up and I'm sure it's not meant to be dirty like sexual but obviously that's where my brain goes right. or maybe it was I don't know but it just really reminds me of Andy's band names wow oh my gosh <laughs> that's pretty good it does it is it's a dead ringer for a, an Andy Dwyer band name for sure it's uh, amazing. and also Chris Pratt said that he had that guitar strap um like he he took that was one of the things he took from the set but he lost it which is really sad how how do you lose something you get to take from set that's so cool i know and it's so important it uh, i'm glad he got to keep it though anyway me too okay so now i'm at the date finally yes i have a note here um and mm-hmm. i think it's just we didn't we didn't reference this earlier that mm-hmm. um she was like not sure if she's gonna dress laura bush or michelle obama Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the second I saw her, I was like, she went Michelle Obama. A hundo percent. For, yeah. Who I love with all my heart. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. She, she's Goddess. amazing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> Leslie I, is just so taken aback by these casual questions, right? Mm-hmm. Of like, what's your favorite movie? She's like, what? Why? Why are you asking me this right. on a business meeting? Yeah. Which... This is where I feel really bad for her and I'm kind of mad at her mom because Mm -hmm. Leslie legit is there to get information for the park. She's there to be professional and she's, it's almost like they're both being rejected, right? Because Leslie doesn't want to be on a date with this guy, but this guy doesn't Mm want to be on a work meeting either. So they're kind of both (laughs) shutting each other down a little bit and it's just like, this is so not functional if Leslie could have been looped into what was happening (laughs) this could have gone a little bit better i think also i just like i know we talked about this but i just cannot handle how hot h-a-w-t leslie looks she has this like smoky eye going on and i have a total like um picture backstory in my head of when she says in the later seasons that Anne gave her a smoky eye look for the first time and i'm imagining that this is when that happened uh and she's wearing this like cute black dress like we talked about um i just like i i just think that she killed it I think so too and I think it helps us like see this potential in her right like she's mm-hmm. she's got this confident sexy side of herself that yeah you know is waiting to kind of break through and yeah. it does yeah a thousand percent. Also, I know this doesn't really go with her fashion or whatever, but I was like really into Leslie's pen. <laughs> it's like this beautiful teal green turquoise color and yes. I was really into it and I want it. <laughs> you can be into pens. I'm into office supplies yeah. all the time. Post-its oh all gosh. the way. I like that this restaurant has a really cool fireplace. I really would like that as well. Uh, they said that the fireplace, oh my gosh, this is really silly, but, and I don't know if it's really true, but in the commentary, they said that the fireplace was, like, supposed to be a metaphor slash symbol kind of thing for, like, him warming up to her and sparks flying for the first time since his divorce. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just so, and... <laughs> so much. Right. But they said that this restaurant is 100 feet from the Universal lot. Oh. And I did some research on this fellow um, who is playing her date. Um do you want to hear it? Do you have any info on this I, fella? I don't. I would love to hear about George. Okay. Okay, George. So this fellow has done a lot of acting in action films, it looks like, uh, that I found. But it's more of like he's the boring character kind of. Well, <laughs> quote unquote boring character where he'll play like judges, senators, doctors, that kind of thing. Evidently, he was a doctor in Spider-Man. I believe the Tobey Maguire one. Um, huh. Okay. So Ron Perkins is his name. 
and he is the husband of Nancy Perkins, who is a casting director of Parks and Rec. And also, that is why Ann Perkins is Ann, last name Perkins, because of go. this casting director. Now, we talk about that also, and I say we as if we're a part of it, but they talk about <laughs> it a lot on Office Ladies as well, where in the office, the last name or, you know, random names will be found because of people on the crew that have that name. Um, but that is why Ann Perkins' is last name is Perkins, and I love yeah. that. So shout out to Nancy and Ron Perkins. Yeah, I like that. I like the um, kind of the family connection. They're both part of mm-hmm. Parks and Rec forever now. Exactly. Yes, they are memorialized. Yes, beautiful. I love it. I think this is something that's hard for me to watch, Leslie, is because I think she comes to this realization that she's on a date oh so God. slowly. And like you, And you can almost see it across her face go from... Well, I'm really confused as to why you're doing this and then kind of start to realize what's happening. Yes. Yes. It's so beautifully done when she finally does realize that it's a date. It's mm-hmm. like you see her thinking it through, then you see her understanding, then you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, and why would her mom think that she would just know? Like when she's on the phone with her mom, her mom's like, why didn't you know that? Almost kind of has that yeah. air about it. And I'm like, why would you ever know that? Right. I, yeah, oh and gosh. I think the other thing is, is right, she, you know, she kind of insinuates Leslie doesn't get out much, so mm-hmm. maybe help her out a little bit, you know? This is not very supportive behavior from a mother. <sighs> yes. It makes me so sad for her. Um, I also looked up who, so he has the, George has the talking head of, she reminds me of a young Sandy Duncan. Um, so I don't know who Sandy Duncan is, so I assume that it was like an older person and it is she's a famous old actress so I'm sorry if there are any older people that are listening to this that were like oh my god you should know who that is um yeah <laughs> I looked her up her first picture was a black and white photo so okay, that there is you go. <laughs> so that's who that is That'll tell you something. in this talking head I really love you guys take a look uh I can't time stamp it for you but at that in that talking head when he's speaking of Sandy Duncan uh there's a kind of some bottles of maybe alcohol or something I don't know but it looks like potion bottles and I just thought that the set design on this one and I'll talk about it a little bit later in the uh in the bar that Andy is playing with his band I love all of the decor and I know that that probably set I say set design but since it was a real restaurant maybe it just was already there but regardless I just really love all of the background uh props and like background in this I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Also, (laughs) I looked up, um, so when she says she wants to go to the rock show, Mm -hmm. and he is like, you know, I can go to the rock show, too. I haven't seen one since the Everly Brothers. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was so funny. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Everly Brothers, they sing the uh, All I Have to Do is Dream song. And dream, 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 whenever I want you, all I have to do. So that's the rock that he thinks he is in for. (laughs) Uh, Rude awakening coming. Oh, man. Um, Well, at the bar, while we're getting ready for Leslie and her date to leave, and join everybody we have ron is introducing his date right which mm-hmm. i'm assuming is tammy's sister mm-hmm. tammy too sister beth yes and he is so proud of himself like yes. it's ridiculous how proud he is like he doesn't even seem that into her he's more into the fact that it's tammy's sister exactly <laughs> which is just kind of sleazy also we get to meet wendy <gasps> wendy which i'm so I love excited wendy. about yeah and i I think she brings some character to Tom, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think when they're together, mm-hmm. you kind of see a melding of, okay, he's he has fun. He's a cool guy. He's not so gross all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. So Agreed. I'm thinking kind of a little bit flash forward to Anne's Halloween party. But mm. this, I think, is a good introduction to Wendy. And yeah. it's almost like because we've seen him being a sleazeball with so many females for like five episodes, mainly Anne, um, meeting his wife, we're like, oh, okay, she's real and she's hot. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, maybe you're just kind of a player a little bit at heart, you know? So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just kind of brings Tom to the ground for me a little bit. Like, Agreed. And I love that they have fun together. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish that they could stay friends and that Tom wasn't, like, as into her as we see in later episodes. But, like, I liked that it showed them having that really cool dynamic. Yeah, I agree. It makes it more realistic, Yeah, and I I was writing in this episode that this scene is really where all of, or this episode I feel is where all of them are really finding their groove. Like, I feel like it's some of the best character work that we've seen so far. Yeah, we're uh, 
the thing that's cool about the bar, right? I don't think we've been to a bar or anything like that yet. So mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're broadening our understanding of each character, right? We're delving a little bit into their personal lives outside of City mm -hmm. Hall, which I think is really cool. Totally. That's how we're meeting who Ron has. We're meeting Wendy. We meet April's weird ass triangle <laughs> relationship crap, you know? Yes. So we're kind of getting to see them out of out of that professional setting and kind of learn about them more. Um, more dimensions to each character, which again, and I know we do this a lot, like comparatively to the office, but we don't really get that with a lot of the characters in the office. You know, we don't get to like mm. grow. I mean, obviously we learn people from their, from their lives. We learn about people from their lives, but we don't have as many opportunities mm. in the office where they're outside of the office and we're getting to see them at, in their more natural state, I guess. Whereas we continue yeah. in Parks and Rec to go to bars, um, do a little bit more of casual hangouts with all these people and kind of get to learn those different sides of them. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, I agree. And uh, evidently it was Aubrey Plaza who plays April. Her It was her idea uh, to have her date be a friend who's gay that she sometimes makes out with. Um, I don't know if that, like, ha I could see it happening in her real life right. potentially, but, like, that was one of the ideas, I, I don't know if she necessarily pitched it or if they were just like talking about it and it happened, but she came up with that, which I thought was really cool. I did not know that. I am loving this information and I can totally buy it. That is something <laughs> I can totally see her doing. So <laughs> I love it. And it's, I, I love it too, because I feel like it, these people stay around long enough that it's like, that they kind of get to establish April is weird and mm -hmm. you know but they also use them kind of for her to step back and be like okay I'm not that out there you know yeah. when she's like I'm done with this I want to be in a relationship where I, I can like the things I want to like or whatever and it's not ironic you know so yeah. it, it helps her character development this relationship I think as well and yeah. I don't think it lasts too right. long where it's like this is not realistic for her to be with these people either. Right. So. Well, I mean, I think you start to see that she cares about something because mm -hmm. I feel as though she is in this relationship. It's just kind of like a fun hangout, like whatever moment. Um, and she cares about those people, too. But it's like it's kind of artificial and their relationship is more about making fun of people. Whereas mm -hmm. when she likes Andy, she becomes a little bit more grounded, a little bit more loving, which I think is really lovely to see. Yeah, I agree. I'm really excited for that. <laughs> Me too, me too. Uh, I'm back at the restaurant um, where uh, George is showing her Leslie pictures of his uh, kids. And uh, yeah. he's evidently he's cool with dating someone who is as young as his youngest son, which is weird. Right. I love her reaction to that. He's about your age. Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this too. So Amy Poehler said that it was really a, a strong character choice for her. I added the strong. She just said it. But basically, it was a character choice for her that she wanted Leslie to make George feel comfortable and like try to be polite because that's really what uh, Leslie would do. Like yeah, not be mean, but try to be compassionate. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And try to ease her way out of it, which is so, oh my God, you can just see it. She's like, oh God, how do I, how do I do this? How do I get it? like to stop <laughs> <laughs> I know I feel so bad for her because she's not going to be blunt about it and it just gets more awkward right because he's like I'm going to feed you my chicken like you that should was literally try my it. next note it was so gross <laughs> it's so I was gross like, scowling as I was watching that I was like oh my god nasty it's also just like gross because I don't think I would let a guy who I had literally met 20 minutes ago feed me anyway yeah like regardless yeah. of whether he's like 30 to 40 years older than me Right. Yeah, I just, yeah. I don't, that's, that's like personal, like, yeah. yeah, I'll let my boyfriend feed me or like put a fry in my mouth while I'm driving or something, you know, but like, <laughs> I don't know, right. like that just seems, yeah, I was just. No, completely oh. agreed. Yeah, it's Ugh. even weirder because he's older. So right. yeah, it's very strange. Right. <laughs> and oh it gosh. definitely accomplished what they wanted to, so <laughs> gross. Ugh, yeah, I have this really cool time mark that I think everybody should go should go uh check out at 13 mm -hmm. minutes and 16 seconds april is dancing and it's really really weird <laughs> oh my and god i gotta watch it yeah i, had, I, I didn't appreciate it. it yeah i appreciate it very much so it's interesting though because if you go back and watch a little bit before that mm -hmm. they're dancing differently i think it's the same song playing but they're dancing one way and then it's another way like the next time the camera's mm -hmm. on them 
So I wonder if there was different music playing and they were just getting different shots and then Ooh, Maddie, you know? I bet you I bet you that was what it was. That is so a good catch. I bet it was because they don't always play the songs that right. is aired. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody's interested, I would go back to maybe twelve minutes. And okay. start paying attention pretty closely at the beginning of 13 minutes because that's when I, 13, 16 is when I got the, like a, a really good dance move by Aubrey Plaza as April. <laughs> but um, I think it was be- right before that, that it, there's a different piece of film in there that you're like, okay, oh, that's different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good one. I have now when, in all caps, I'm saying it very low register because I love it so much i wrote yes mad ann yes this camera work is first of all so good because they're following through the bar really fast love that but i just love when she gets sassy and angry with uh with andy it's the best yeah and i love it and i love how she channels that into mark because Mm -hmm. she you know because i think if she wasn't mad at andy do you think she would have been as forward with mark about how frustrated yeah so I think that plays. No, a because huge she role. literally has that line where she's like, you know, um, oh, I'm yeah. just gonna not do this because I've had a really shitty night and I don't really like what's happening right now. So yeah. fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. I thought that was wonderful. And then he's like he tries to back out of it. Mark is all like, Oh, I promise you I wasn't trying to ask you out and I'm like, You dick, you really were. You You're really not a man were, of though. honor. You don't deserve Leslie. I'm gonna punch you in the head. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because like I don't hate Mark. I really don't. Right. No, I, I, I love that you said that, Manny, that you are literally the and to my le- my yes. like dramatic Leslie. Because <laughs> I was thinking that as I was saying it. I was like, I don't hate him. He's just being super dumb. And I guess he's in a sense, though, he's taking a risk. He definitely mm-hmm. is trying to, you know, edge that line of if this goes well, it could go really well. You know? Right. Ugh. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and I think we've talked about this before, right? Like, I mean... We also can't hate him because he hasn't really done anything to Leslie. That, that I think a lot of that is on Leslie, unfortunately. But I, I, I'm back to Anne. Like, I think she, she is killing it right there. And, like, I think I've been in moments like that, not necessarily recently, where, like, things have been said. And I'm like, I really wish I had said something more about what had just happened. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I just want to channel my inner Anne because, like, I want to stand up and say those things, you know? Yeah. So I'm so proud of her. Um, at the end, though, when he's like, I promise I wasn't hitting on. She's like, good. I'm glad we avoided yeah. that. And that's like, oh, so good. I love yes. it so much. She goes off. <laughs> it's the best. And yeah. OK. Oh, yeah. That was another thing. Like, I know this is getting too specific, maybe and nitty gritty. But like when he says, you know, even though you did just call him like a big lying baby or whatever, like that's was giving him justification, mm. almost like a defense of why he was able or why he thought he could like hit right. on her. And I was like, she's allowed to do right. that. She is allowed to say how she feels right now. OK, you can't take advantage of that. But I, I mean, at the same if I was a dude, maybe in some regards I would understand where Mark's coming from, which again, like I said, I don't hate him. But like she, the point is that she is allowed to feel like annoyed right. and she was letting off some steam. Okay. You can't just like go for it. After yeah. That. No, you cannot. Not okay. Also, her lip gloss is really shiny. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> and yeah, I think I did clock yeah. that. I didn't make a note of it, but yeah, for sure. I just kept staring at it the whole time, which was like fine. <laughs> um, but I was like, this is really shiny. Yeah. I have something about the song that Chris Pratt is singing at the band, which uh, at the mm-hmm. band at the bar, which side note, I like Mouse Rat. I think if I heard that in a bar, I would be dancing around. As I like well. I like Mouse so. Rat as well. I like them as a band. I like the songs that have been written for them and even the ones that are supposed to be like a joke, like The Pit and uh, mm-hmm. 5,000 Candles in the Wind. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah, that <laughs> that song is yes. a banger for me. And I know it was written as a I know. joke. <laughs> hundred percent though it's so good and leslie's um campaign song yeah. so good catch your dreams i do wonder if mark Riv- yes catch your, your dreams, dreams. Ugh, so good i do wonder if mark rivers wrote those as well i'll have to research that because when i was doing my research on mark rivers i thought that maybe he just wrote the songs for this episode that we mm. hear but maybe he wrote all of them who knows um he but anyway 
Speaking of songs, okay, so there's uh, this song when she gets all mad, um, where uh, he donates, er, donates. Oh my god, <laughs> where he um, dedicates, dedicates this song to Anne. It's Anne's song. Um, I number one, I love the la di da di da's la di da di da la di da. So Anne. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. So, side note, Chris Pratt wrote this song, which oh, is nice. amazing. He wrote it. Um, and that's the song that's playing on the boom box in his baby pool, just mm-hmm. a friendly reminder when he was bathing himself. Anyway, Scarecrow Boat, side note, scarecrowboat.com was a real thing, and you could go download the four songs that they had. So, when he talks about at the end, when he's having that little meet and greet chat moment with the band and saying, like, we recut the demo, we send the demo out, blah, 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 you could go download those songs. It does not exist anymore, unfortunately, but there are a lot of t-shirts out there that you can still buy with all of those names if you so choose. That's cool. Yes, Uh, I do have a t-shirt with the names on it. My brother got it for me for my birthday one year. Oh, yeah, I've seen that shirt. Yeah, Yeah. when I went to Memphis, I remember that. Yes, and uh, his words to me were, don't wear this to school (laughs) when I was still teaching. (laughs) Which, oh, that's so funny. Good, because, you know, the word penis is on there like five times, so that's probably a good yeah. call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also have that um, when Tom is introduced to George, I think it's the first, like, Tom face to camera. He does mm-hmm. that smile to camera. Uh, and it's probably not the first time, but I'm that's the first time I clocked it within these six episodes, and I will definitely be tracking <laughs> Yeah. that Maddie just did the Tom face. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Tom face. I Me use too. it too much, probably. <laughs> oh, it's the best. Oh, mm. my God. Um, I don't like that Andy also is... I know this is like... I don't want to genderize, if that's a word. But I know that this is like a thing where dudes in rock bands and just in general musicians, for the most part, not always, lots of people dress very nicely. Lots mm-hmm. of men dress very nicely. But a lot of times, this is like the quintessential stereotype of rock slash even mostly country um male singers i'm like why are you so grungy and sweaty looking like i get you can be sweaty after but like can you just like put on like a nicer shirt ish maybe i don't know you look nasty (laughs) (laughs) oh that's funny but i guess i and like the point i'm trying to make is that like i understand he's in a dive bar in like this small podunk town i get that but i it just i think triggered in me like people that i see that are making buttloads of money with like ticket payers Mm. like and you're still just wearing like shitty ass clothes and I don't know why that is so important to me but I'm like can you try to dress the occasion (laughs) I think it's because my mom always like ingrained in me like if you're gonna go somewhere nice you should probably have something nice on like ish right you know yeah um I love Tom has a line here that I just really love I love all the Tom Tom lines in this this episode Mm -hmm. it seems like but When Leslie comes in with George, Mm -hmm. he introduces Wendy and he says, this is my wife, Wendy. She's my age. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's like, that was sassy and rude, but also hilarious. (laughs) Mm, Dead or asleep. (laughs) Yeah. Dead (laughs) or asleep. asleep. Dead or asleep. (laughs) So funny. Um, I love it, too. He brings up college, right? And he's like, oh, uh, that's where my friend went. When did you go? Maybe you know him. It's like, oh, he, he graduated in 68. It's like, oh, my friend graduated in 2005. <laughs> you probably missed him. <laughs> yeah. 68 is when he graduated college. Damn. My mom graduated college almost 20 years after that. Wow. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I understand the timing. Right. Just like kind of putting it in perspective. <laughs> Leslie just got here and she brought her dad was also <laughs> one of my favorite lines. There's some gold lines in the bar for sure and right after that is when Anne is standing up for herself um because leslie's asking about the encore like could you guys do another song i'm so sorry that i missed your songs uh and andy wants to leave and i really um love hate that line of like i know she's too nice to get mad at me in this bar so i'm i'm not leaving this bar and i'm like okay face the music dude you did something wrong right like and so but I love that because I feel as though typically from what we've seen of Anne she'd be like oh sure okay fine do another song whatever and uh but this time she was like she did not give in she was like okay bitch (laughs) get out of this bar and um I love that she acknowledges Leslie and then she's like okay we're leaving right yeah 
I mean, yeah, Andy's milking that. He really wants to stay. But yeah, I agree. I like mm-hmm. the way she handled it. Like, no, we are leaving, like standing up for herself. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, like being like, Leslie, I understand like this sucks, mm-hmm. but like I have shit I need to do right now <laughs> to fix what's going mm-hmm. on. So yeah. And I just, I think that's another reason that I call Andy a child, right? He, mm-hmm. he made this choice. He knows what he's done. He's not going to mm-hmm. take responsibility for it and like a grown man needs to look and say i made a mistake how can i fix this you know Mm -hmm. and he just doesn't have the capacity to do that so i do love these uh lamp things i was saying that a little bit earlier that i was going to tell you more set design Mm -hmm. things i liked um these really cool lamp things that are hanging from the ceiling there's a couple uh, but there's this one with like a moon and cool cutouts and i want those Mm -hmm. so if anyone finds those let me know and i also really like all of these posters on the bar's wall you can see that mouse rat or scarecrow boat has won battle of the bands and it got me thinking also because the the flyer i paused on it and it says that the show starts at nine but leslie doesn't get there until it's over so i'm wondering how late did she go out with this fellow? (laughs) like maybe it was an eight o'clock dinner and then they stayed till 10 that could be a thing um, I, by the way, you guys, I, I don't know, maybe I'm an old lady or something, but I do not like when dates or anything really starts at eight. I'm like, can we go like 30 minutes after work because <laughs> I want to go home after <laughs> or like, I don't know. I just am too tired by that point. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you too. I think w- if I make a plan for eight, it's like, okay, but like, I'm going to go home in between and I'm going to probably get home and not want to leave again. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but then are you at the bar now where Leslie is talking to Mark? I am, and I have this note that I think she's just being, I mean, she's being her optimistic self, right? But she's being a good mm-hmm. friend, too. Like, he sees this speed bump as such a small thing. But, like, she mm-hmm. sees it for what it is because she's a government employee. And she's like, yeah, I know that takes a crap ton of time and, you know, a lot of signatures and stuff. So, like, she's really proud of him. And, like, you, you got something done. You know, so yeah, I love you fix that. something, you help. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to do. I love, yeah, I wrote that too. I love how genuine she is, and I think he can trust that with her, right? She's not putting off on a facade like, "Oh, you got the speed bump raised, nice job, buddy." Mm. Like she is. The mm-hmm. genuine is like the perfect word for that. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's really important for us to see. Mark explaining what his goals were and why they were so important because it really makes us understand kind of who he is. I thought that, um, I think Paul is his first name in Mm -hmm. real life. I think he did such a good job with that. Um, He feels like stuck and disappointed and, you know, I feel like maybe I'm being way too psychological with it, but I do feel like um, him being it like a ladies man and stuff. It made me, this scene made me think like maybe those like ladies make him feel validated because he doesn't feel validated in his job Mm. um, because he didn't think that he would be doing like quote unquote boring stuff Um, but yeah I just I thought that was really cool for us to see the backstory of him yeah I agree and they could be friends it's really sad also like I feel like they make such a good like friendship you know they really do and I think we see that as we go forward a little bit right Um, Mm -hmm. but I, I agree I think it's a great friendship I I love seeing this different side of Mark. You know, it gives us an understanding Mm -hmm. as to why he's kind of a pessimist and, you know, why he's there, right? Because you question sometimes. You're like, dude, you hate this job. Why are you there? And it's because he had those dreams to begin with, right? So there's probably some sort of hope in Mm -hmm. him that's like, I could still do that. So I don't know. But yeah, Yeah. I I love seeing this different side. and um, And they head over to the pit, right? And they're kind of dreaming about the pit together, which I think is... Mm -hmm is beautiful because you know throughout the series really uh, especially until she meets Ben but like a lot of times Leslie is kind of dreaming on her own and so getting to voice those things and Mm -hmm. have him be like yeah that's that would be really cool is I think really nice for her and something she needs so yeah um two things number one can you get beers to go question mark from a bar I know that we (laughs) have been able to in COVID times during during COVID right um there are things here. I don't know if you have if you have them in Virginia or if you have them in Tennessee. I didn't have them in Illinois, and I didn't see them when we lived in Boston. They have drive through liquor stores. Oh, they have that in North Carolina. Um, okay, that I've been through. It's called the Brew Through. I really love that. Nice. But like, I That's know amazing. it's so good. But like, they he literally tells the bartender, "Okay, some beers to go, please." And I was like, "Is that a thing?" <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see if that actually worked or if they stopped somewhere. Right, 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 right. I mean, it because is a small I town and they stayed for a long time, so maybe he was cool, but I don't know if that's legal. But anyway, so that's my number one thing. Number two is, um, I know I keep talking about the fashion of it, but I really love Leslie's jacket peacoat thing. I think it looks really comfy and professional, so I love mm-hmm. that. And then number three is that, I think I said I only had two things, but I have a third, is that at this time when they're at the pit, uh, the commentary said that this was at 1.30 a.m. is when they were shooting this scene. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yes. A lot of times when you want a night shoot, uh, you have to do it overnight because there's no way for you to really show that it's actually nighttime because there's like, you know, you see the sun now, obviously, but then you also see like the moon is not in the right spot or like, you know, some other bullshit. So like it has to be after uh, like 8 p.m. usually. Right. That makes sense because you also like want to get the right amount of shots and takes and everything so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes sense um i have they're they're throwing things into the pit Mm -hmm. right and i love this line that because leslie misses right she's throwing the bottle (laughs) or whatever and it falls behind her and he's like you missed the entire pit which is huge by the way which I just love that line. And they're kind of joking around. And I love that. Like, I think you're totally right. It's this friend relationship that um, I think that's probably why Leslie's been hooked on him for so long. Yeah. Because they do get along mm-hmm. and they do have a good friendship. So I can understand that. But yeah, I love the whole uh, like you're deputy director, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, they're playing around <laughs> being playful. A lot of um, this like duck duck glass ring around the diaper all that kind of stuff (laughs) that was improvised which was amazing I thought that was really wonderful because that was the first time uh from what I couldn't gather that that Paul Schneider did that um because all the other characters have had chances to and they've kind of they're more comfortable with improv but he hasn't really come from an improv background so he wasn't really you know comfortable doing that as much so I'm, I'm really glad that he kind of like I said in this episode they're all kind of finding their groove not only in their characters but working with each other so that was really cool mm-hmm. to learn and so all of those laughs from Amy Poehler are real <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love this spy shot that we're getting mm. of Anne's house me too me too it's it's beautiful because I think I don't know. It just I think it, as the audience, it gives you more of an authentic take on what's happening. Definitely. Because I think even if we might not consciously think about it, I think subconsciously when we watch this show, we remember that we're a documentary and they know we're there. Yeah. Right. Especially because they'll look at the cameras. Mm-hmm. But like this is a very intense moment between Anne and Andy mm-hmm. and they don't know that the cameras are there. So it just makes it kind of like a little bit more suspenseful. So I really liked the way they they shot that. Mm-hmm. Me too. And that line of when he tries to save himself, like, but oh I gosh. really like when you serve me food. <laughs> not the right thing to say, buddy. It's really I laughed not out the right loud thing to when say. he walks out the door and shuts, like, it slams in his face and then the camera zooms in on his, like, sad little pity face. It is, I laughed yeah. out loud. It was so funny. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And I love the line she has, like, um. She says something like leave, but like with your overly healed legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's kind of a throwaway line. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love it. So funny. Um, We see Mark fall into the pit and yes. Andy sees it. Oh, my gosh. That's such a good scene. They added, evidently they added, there's a crunching sound when he falls. Uh, mm-hmm. That was a stunt man for Mark, just FYI. Okay. Uh, I went back and watched it because it looked really rough. Um, Also... Yeah, so number one, they added the crunching sound. But number two, when you go back and watch, that bench is so close to the edge of the pit. It's so close, so dangerous. Yeah, and they've been drinking, so that's Mm -hmm. also a factor. Fun fact that I thought was really interesting on a character note is that Amy Poehler said that if Mark, the character of Mark, had told Leslie, you know, yes, we can make a park because, she, you know, Leslie's asking, do you think that this is possible? Do you think we can do it? And Mark says, you know, honestly, there's going to be a lot of red tape and I just don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, Amy Poehler said that if Mark had said to Leslie, yes, we can make this park, we can do this, then she would have gone home with him. Like she would have continued the kiss is what I mean to say. Mm. Be- but because he was being very like realist and pragmatic she kind of changed her mind and was like I don't want this to happen this way like I want to control how this goes down kind of thing I thought it was a really cool scene to see yeah I like that take too that she has on her character like Mm -hmm. you know 
which I think is realistic, mm -hmm. the way she's seeing it. I can totally see it that way as well. Yeah, and then he says um, it's not that big of a deal. Like, fuck you. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're kissing That's Leslie. That's a big deal nope. to her. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, first of all, I think he should see it as a, you know, as a big deal. But additionally, I think I also have to remind myself that he doesn't know what it means to her. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. done this with a bunch of other girls. And, so it doesn't and, and, mean and, as much to him. Right. A thousand percent. And I don't think he would do this, which is this is the part that makes me so glad that she stopped it. He wouldn't have mm -hmm. done this if he hadn't been rejected by Anne. If he yeah. I think that's my take on it as an audience member. I'm like, you're drunk and you're horny <laughs> and you're yeah. having a good time. So now you're just like, OK, she's here. She likes me, I think. So let's kiss. But if she if Anne had been all like into his approach, yeah. I do not think that it would have gone down It'd the same different. way. Yeah, because then that's that's the sad part too, and that's because he was a seventh wheel at the bar, and that's why I do feel like he even started that conversation with her, because she's about to walk out the door, and he was all being pitiful for himself, having his own mm -hmm. little moment, and so like that's kind of where that transpired, which I think is beautifully right. written, but I was like, oh no, <laughs> yeah, so hey, Phoebe, yeah, a little bit of Phoebe <laughs> came out. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe from Friends, you mean? Yes. Yes, I with your own. Oh, that no. you that. That's literally yeah. what it's from. <laughs> uh, yeah. So true. Yeah, but that is so good. And this is the thing, though, too. Now we're. Uh, what is up with the guys in this show? Like, I think they just made some really strong female characters, and maybe that's why the guys are like seeming lower than us. Yeah, the maybe lower you're right. to us. But it's <laughs> the the crazy thing to me is freaking Andy. Is like, oh, Anne's going to go take care of Mark. The door's wide open. That obviously means I can go back inside. <laughs> right. Like, exactly. You dick. You were just kicked out. Stay out. Like, oh, my God. It was not appropriate. It makes me I so I wrote mad. that, too. I was like, ugh, I want to punch Annie in the head when he jumps yeah. back on the couch. 100%. Also, side note, fun fact, another fun fact, is that they wrote this ending for Chris Pratt's character to be a little bit more dramatic mm. um, because, you know, it, it was the end of the season. They wanted it to be a little bit more sad for him to kind of leave and, you know, not be in season two. Um, but right. then, like, he played it, you know, when they were shooting it way more comedic and they were like, fuck it, let's just leave it as, com <laughs> as comedy because it's so brilliant, which I thought was really interesting. I can't imagine it really being serious on Chris Pratt's part. I guess it would just no. be like if he was more sad that he wasn't with Anne anymore and like mm -hmm. maybe less laughing. I think that's what it was. Like he was laughing at Mark having fa fallen in the pit as opposed to like being like, oh my God, he's really hurt kind of thing. Right. You know, so, but yeah, ugh, what a time. We all fell in the pit. We all fell in the pit. <laughs> Well, that's, well, that's all I have for rock note. show. Oh my god, yeah. Jinx! <laughs> <laughs> Why are we the same person? <laughs> it is so brilliant. Oh my god. Uh, oh, well, we did it, you guys. Episode six is in the books. Season one is in the books. We are moving on to season yes. two. The next one you will hear is season two, episode one. I think it's called Pawnee Zoo, right? Yes! Oh my gosh! Phenomenal! Rights, episode. Love is love. Yes, I'm so excited about this episode. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, it's going to be great. Well, don't forget to follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. And I didn't say this in the last couple episodes, um, but subscribe on podcasts, Apple Podcasts, if you are listening that way. Uh, I think you can also follow it on Spotify or something like this. Write a review if you like it. Um, you know, leave us some stars, however you feel. We do have an email address that I check, parkpalspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, and then keep voting and let us know what you want us to look up next. So hopefully season two will bring us some more guest stars to the pod as well. So yeah. I am really banking on people answering my freaking messages. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though. I'll start sending great. them, too, so that they're getting double whammies. Yeah, you should. Okay, I'll send you a list of people that I'm messaging. Yes, so. I love it. <laughs> uh, well, right. that's if it. If you'd like to stay around and do some therapy, we would love to love to talk with you yay okay yay. see you there there's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too okay let's do it 
Um, I'll start, I guess, with sharing that something I've been really frustrated about this week is um, the scale again. I touched on this last week, or well, I guess technically it would be last week, but um, I touched on this in in a couple of episodes where I really equate the scale to success or a number on the scale to success or beauty or whatever, and um I think it was either Sunday or Saturday maybe that I weighed myself and I have been trying really hard not to weigh myself every day because Noom, that's a thing. I do like Noom uh, as far as the tracking and the psychology and the science behind weight loss and dieting and things like that. Or not dieting, but lifestyling changes. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that they have you do is weigh yourself every day. And um, I think that is intended to get your fear of the scale out of your brain to just like, you know, what's that thing in psychology where like the more you're um, shown or like exposed to, is it exposure therapy or something like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, yeah, the more you're shown of something that you're scared of, the less scared you'll be. Um, But that wasn't really my problem. I mean, I'm not really scared of the scale. I just like equate it with something that's not the same and uh, exposing myself to it isn't helping. I've tried it for um, about a month now or maybe Mm. two almost. uh, And it does not work because the scale fluctuates so much. Number one. And number two, it's not indicative of how I'm feeling or what my body is capable of. I was journaling about this the other day because after, like I said, it was either Saturday or Sunday. I weighed myself, um, and I had gone up or something and I was like this is ridiculous I have been working really hard I have been exercising and boxing and all this stuff and the scale is not reflecting that and then I was just like really mad for a couple like hours and then I did my boxing and my yoga and in my boxing and yoga I was like I'm, I'm really glad that I've been doing this yoga thing because it's very much bringing my presence back to what my body is doing I was mm. like planking for a really long time that without getting tired I was like doing my um stretches like being able to like pull your my like the um I don't know what the thing is called um but like my lunges and like being able to stay up and then I was able to do push-ups and all these things and I was like my body is fucking killing it right now I don't I and so I was trying to really get right with my mind of the scale is not indicative of what I'm capable of and I don't know how to I still don't know how to get past it because every time I look at the number on the scale I'm just like really frustrated by it I was actually talking to my therapist and um, I think I mentioned this in one of the episodes I still have to do this but I want to put on the scale like these little notes to myself of you know and like with an arrow pointing at the number being like you know this number does not equal beauty this number does not equal success like you Mm -hmm. are strong or whatever and so that I associate it more with positive like feedback and remarks because I still don't really know how to get past you know looking at the number as my success and I think that obviously goes back to maybe not obviously but I have been on a weight loss journey since about the fifth grade so I don't really have any idea of what it's like to not diet or not limit myself Mm. or whatever like it's always something that's on my mind um but yeah I mean I finally definitely came to a good like situation where I know that I'm strong but for some yeah. reason I still keep looking at that number like Ugh, it should be lower for all the shit I can do like yeah. I don't get it so yeah. well anyways easy, so okay. I was just gonna say an easy thing to forget I think sometimes and I I used to forget this a lot and I kind of had to remind myself of this is your weight you have to remember that m- muscle actually weighs more than fat yes that's so, true even if you lost 10 pounds of fat and you are like 10 times stronger in your arms and legs, you might weigh more. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I always like, this is something I did. Our, our scale ran out of batteries. <laughs> okay. I haven't replaced them. Good for you. Cause that like, I think, and it's funny because I've caught my, I did not know that I weighed myself so much until I started ca- catching myself and saying, Oh, it's out of batteries. I can't weigh myself. Oh, mm-hmm. it's out of batteries. I can't weigh myself. And I was like, I don't know if that's a healthy thing for me to be doing. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I look, I almost catch myself twice a day and I'm like, that's not yes. good. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's and just, all these it's, things that show you your success on the, uh, like in your body, 
uh, 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 like scales, yes, but also the BMI situation mm-hmm. is not accurate anymore. Like it's not, it's been disproven scientifically that it doesn't capture all like, you know, all people like mm-hmm. you know that thing was built in or created or invented or whatever the hell like millions of years ago and the only people that they did like you know studies on f- to make this correct was like you know these short white men because those are the only people around <laughs> right. or like that they cared about or whatever so that's not really a thing and that's how we measure like obesity and I think it's maybe a good like blueprint maybe but we really need to update it if that's what we're going to measure the success at you know right so yeah totally anyways yeah. but that's something I've been thinking about this week especially um and then the Super Bowl happened and I drank and ate a lot but I also exercised a lot too so I let myself do that um which I'm really glad that I did that because everything was delicious and perfect and I love beer <laughs> <laughs> beer is good so so yeah I don't know it's just I gotta keep working at creating something positive for the scale but I do feel strong it's just some I don't know why that's not enough for me yeah do you do you feel better in your body than you did six months ago <sighs> better not maybe not better I feel I just I just feel like I've maintained my strength mm. because when I before I I definitely definitely 100 percent feel better than when I than before I started boxing Mm -hmm. I've been boxing for about two years now on and off. But now that I have my own bag and not going to the gym, I do it more frequently because it's here. Um, But like before I was boxing, I didn't feel strong like at all. And now I feel like I can hold like I said, I can hold planks and pushups and stuff. But um, I definitely know there is some fat that I can lose for sure, like for like to fit more comfortably in jeans and things like that. Um, But yeah, I, I don't think I've gotten to that point where I feel like better or more different right now it's just like a maintenance thing that's been going Mm. on which is also fine yeah yeah that's important too yeah so i mean maintaining a weight that you're you feel healthy and i think is important and even if you're like this isn't my ideal body i think Mm -hmm. being like you know i'm where i was i'm not going backwards i think that's important too yeah you know and we don't give enough credit to maintenance we really don't. Yeah. As a society, we don't. I agree with you. Yeah, and I do think it's a lot of um, societal problems, too. Because, you know, when I was young and starting my weight loss journey, I was like, oh, I look like her now after I had lost the mm. weight. You know, it wasn't like, there's someone that's my same size. You know, I, it wasn't representative. So now it's definitely changed. But my brain has already been formed to think that that's, like, what my size is isn't great. And people who know me know that I'm very confident and I, I like my body, but I don't love it. And it's always right. something – and I'm working really hard to – and being patient with – trying to be patient anyway, to trust that eventually I will love and be in love with my body, you know? And that's like a constant journey for me that hopefully one day I'll get to. But I've told myself that when I do get to that point, I want to really – be aware of it because there's been so many times in my life when I have reached my ideal weight but I didn't stop and think oh like this is what it feels like I am capable of this this is where I can Mm. like have an anchor to come back to um but also I think it's an addiction it's into some sense Mm -hmm. like weight loss and dieting and food in general like when you were talking about weighing yourself twice a week for me uh, or twice a day or whatever I a thousand percent have felt that urge and it's like a high Maddie it's like no I'll I'll look at the scale and I'll be like nope we don't do that right now we're not gonna do that because it's not our day to weigh and that's not showing our success you know? Right. And I remember yeah. feeling like when I was on Weight Watchers as a young kid, like losing weight and it felt like a high almost like a real success, like uh, joy, you know, yeah. <laughs> bliss. And so but that, you know, that should be associated with something good. It's just uh, retraining my brain. Yeah. And it's crazy. We can have such an unhealthy relationship with being healthy. Mm-hmm. You oh know, that's so true. That was deep. Um, that was an Oprah moment. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah moment I love it um and this is totally our society because you and I have talked a little bit more deeply about like how we've both struggled with this mm-hmm. but especially with females and I'm not saying men don't have this problem men do have eating disorders mm-hmm. men have problems with their bodies as well it's definitely not just a female thing but right. it's very heavily drilled in our society that 
we're going to, we need to be a certain size. And it almost has been drilled in that we need to be a certain size to be happy. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and like, and like you're saying to be successful, right? You're not going to be a famous actress unless you're this tiny. Right. You're not going to be a businesswoman unless you can fit in these tiny like suits that make you look really professional. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, and our weight, our, like, is such a tiny, tiny, tiny piece mm-hmm. of our lives. Yeah. You know, but we make it so much bigger than it is. And it's important to be healthy. I'm not saying don't eat healthily and, you know, like, oh, it's fine to be eating McDonald's for every meal of the day. Mm-hmm. That's, like, not what I'm saying. But, like, you know, we need to find pride in the journey, kind of like what you're saying, right? Like, find pride in the steps you've made in your journey because it's it does not play a big enough role in our overall mental health. Yeah you know, to be worrying about it this much that it, that, you know, we make it out to be more than it is. And I speak for myself. I'm not saying every, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Mm-hmm. I put too much weight on it. Not pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought about that too. So, yeah. But I mean, you know, I think it's an important topic. Like, so I'm really glad you brought it up because there's no shame in being unhappy with your body. It's a journey we all have to take mm-hmm. to be, to find that peace yeah well and especially in in the pandemic when so many people are staying home or maybe not being as active Mm -hmm. because gyms aren't open or you don't want to go outside depending on you know where you live like you know we the world and you probably went through some kind of trauma this past year so Mm -hmm. we're all kind of handling that and for the people who have struggled with weight their entire life like even if you haven't but especially the ones that that have this has been a really rough time (laughs) so Mm -hmm. so yeah um but yeah, that's that's just what I've been kind of going through and thinking about lately. I'm glad, though, that I have you and my therapist to kind of bounce ideas off of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I, um, I don't know. That was really therapeutic for me, too, I think, to like hear you talk about it and kind of think through it together. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What's going on? Anything new or any updates to, ta- to tell us? Uh, I don't have a ton of updates right now. Um, I did find out from my mom, though. That she still is having a hard time getting into the country Um, in case people are not in the loop or you're just now listening and hearing about this. My mom lives in Singapore Mm -hmm. um, with my stepdad and um, I'm so happy for them. I know that they like living there, but I have not seen her for 14 months now. My God, I can't get over that. I know. I like every month passes and there's another like you know, number added to that month count. I mm-hmm. just am like flabbergasted because I think the longest I've ever spent away from my mom is maybe five months before yeah. the pandemic. Um, but and we had no idea when we said goodbye in Christmas of 2019 that that would be the last time we would see each other yeah. for a very, very long time. So it's been it's been a lot for me. And I think I do a pretty good job of pushing it in the back of my head. Yeah. And try not to think about it. But when I start to think about it, I kind of go into a tailspin of like, oh, my gosh, what do I do without my mom? Like, I know. you know, uh, and there's an added aspect of it with um, those of you that know about international stuff. Like she's in a completely different time zone, too. She's she's 15 hours ahead. So it's 758 where I am right now, which means it is almost 11 o'clock in the morning her time. Mm-hmm. So finding a yeah. time for us to talk is also kind of a shit show. <laughs> um, really hard. I hate yeah. time zones. Ugh. Yeah. We try our best. And I mean, luckily, I love it because my brother gets to talk to her a lot because his his schedule is, is a little bit more flexible than mine. Um, and so I'll come home and he'll be on the phone with her. So I get to just like kind of be like, hi, mom, like yell through mm-hmm. his door and be like, I love you. So, um, but I know, I mean, thank God for technology. Oh I mean, gosh. I know it's not the same at all, but thank God that you do have some way of communication. It's just gnarly. Holly, though, I would probably die. I don't know what but I would actually, do. But actually. Yeah. Like, but actually. Actually, I, I think this comes across pretty clearly in the podcast. Um, but Holly and I have been very, very blessed to have solid relationships with our moms. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it's not the same for everyone. And, um, you know, I, I hope everyone has at least one person in their life they can look up to and have kind of a parental relationship with. I think it's really important. Yeah. But, you know, so like 
being in a space where like she's not at my beck and call I, that sounds so bad no but like when you can actually yeah. reach her when you want to you don't yeah. mean beck and call like serving no, you yeah, you no. mean like you, where you can speak to her when you want to speak to her yeah like and when you can't speak to her when you've got I mean I've been in that and I know you have it sounds like where you've been in that situation where you're just like I need to talk to my mom right now or I'm going to break down and like for a long time yep. and then when you and I've been in that situation where I can't talk to her or she's busy or something and I do break down <laughs> <laughs> until she calls me and that's why I also I hate to bring this part up but I'm like oh my god I don't know what I'm gonna do when she's not on this earth anymore I don't I'm not gonna think about it let's hopefully see, by that not. time I'll be prepared but like regardless yeah. um yeah that's 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 traumatic in and of itself yeah. to not be able to sp- to speak to your mom right and so I mean I think that's or the, see her and hug her and feel yeah. her. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure I'm going to bring this up again, especially if she doesn't make it back soon. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest thing just cause I'm, I, you know, I'm, as we've talked about, I'm in my new job and I really like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm very blessed to go home to my, my baby brother, who's not so baby mm-hmm. anymore, but, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I have a really great boyfriend who's very caring and loving and, uh, but it, you know, it hits you some days where you're like, you can have people in your life that you care about and that love you and fill your cup every day. But there's something about a mom's love that just like, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I told my Nana that, which is my mom's mom. And I told her, I was mm-hmm. like, cause I talked to her on the phone, um, occasionally. And I, I was talking to her, I was like, I just really miss mom. And she said, you got to get used to that feeling. Cause I'm 81 and I miss my mom. Yeah. Oh my God. That's funny. My mom says that all the time yeah. about her mom as well. Yeah. It just <sighs> doesn't go away. It's, it's a bond that, you know, it's a bond I'm really excited to build with my future kids, but mm-hmm. it's a bond that like I cherish and I know I'm very lucky to have now. And so it's just, I, you know, I feel, I feel really bad complaining about it, Holly, honestly, because I have friends whose mothers have passed away. And, no, I know, but know. it's all relative and you right. get to feel the way that you feel yeah. and it's just coping at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Gotta yeah, be. you're, you're, you're yeah, literally though, your thoughts and feelings are so valid. Like uh, uh, it's, it's cannot be said enough. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cause I do that a lot where I'm like, well, somebody else has it worse off than me. So I can't really complain I know. about it. <laughs> I know we all fall into that pit of like, well, it could be worse. Oh, oh my gosh. Speaking of which, I'm going to send this book to you. I haven't even finished it. I'm only on the first chapter and I want to send it to literally every person ever. It's, um, it's a book actually from the 1980s and it's called when bad things happen to good people. And Mm -hmm. it's by this rabbi, um, who you would think would be like, oh, everything happens for a reason. This is all God's plan and blah, blah, blah. And he kind of like is calling bullshit (laughs) on the whole idea of like this is a punishment or this is humbling you or x y and z um i haven't gotten like like i said i'm only in chapter one but like the way that he articulates things he had something really terrible and traumatic happen to him uh, with his kid and uh it's 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 insane so and I got it for like three dollars on one of the used book sites that I found on Google or something so I'm gonna send it to you though like I I think I'm honestly gonna buy like 10 copies and send it to the people that I think need it the most um yeah I love that (laughs) it's so brilliant and I think that it again the reason I brought this up was um because that whole like it all being relative like I have like someone else has it worse than me so I shouldn't complain or whatever right that's also mentioned kind of in the book too so um but like you get to feel the way that you feel, right. you know? Yeah. So it's so crazy. Do you know if she can, um, like if there's been any restrictions lifted where like she can get tested and then if she's negative, she can come? Cause I know some countries are doing that. Yeah. So they're waiting to hear back from a travel agency right now. That's what they're waiting oh, for, okay. um, to find flights because every time they look into flights, it says no flights available. So, mm. and they've been really stressed out about it. So they're like, you know what, we're just going to send this over to a travel a- agency and maybe they'll be able to figure this out. So that's um, what they're waiting on right now. Um, yeah. They will, she'll Are have to get tested. Are vaccines being distributed there? Three, what? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if vaccines are being distributed there. Yeah. And um, they're hoping that they move up the list a little bit just because a lot of the locals in Singapore aren't wanting the vaccine, which honestly mm. makes sense because the COVID isn't really there and if you're a local and you don't travel they're like what is the point of me getting one um interesting so yeah she'll have to get tested three days before travel at least 
And then Mm -hmm. um, she has to quarantine in the States for seven days, which is not Mm -hmm. a big deal. She has a house here. So she's, you know, she'll just quarantine in there. Yeah, she can do that. Um, And my brother's going to go back and help her um, because they're going to try to move out of the house and she needs Mm -hmm. to sell her house. Um, So that's what she's going to try to do. But um, the problem is getting back in. She has to get permission from the Singaporean government to leave and then come back in as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. I mean, I know they're trying to be super safe. I have all the respect for them doing what they need to do. Um, yeah. my stepdad, unfortunately, it sounds like he will not be able to come back right now. Um, Mm. which is weird too, because like when I see my mom, I typically see my stepdad now. And Mm -hmm. so it's been like over, you know, same amount of time since I've seen my stepdad. So, it's, it's very interesting to go this long without, you know, that half of your family. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so I he can't really come back, it sounds like, because if for some reason the Singaporean government is like, yo, like, you can't come back in now, he mm-hmm. could lose his job. Because the companies are basically over there telling all their employees, if you leave, you're leaving at your own accord. Right. And if you can't get back in, that was your choice. Because we're not asking mm-hmm. you to travel anywhere. Right. So which is tough for my stepdad because he has a he has a grandchild that was born in July. Yeah. That he hasn't met. So it's a whole thing. I just really hope that this is over soon. I mean, I'm I'm not being too hopeful in the sense that it'll be over in a few months because that's not realistic. But hopefully by and I know this sounds even I don't know how it sounds, but I just hope that by next year, 2022, that it'll like maybe be five percent of like the crazies that sorry not crazies but like the people that didn't want to get vaccinated (laughs) hopefully the majority of us will have that herd immunity and it'll be safe to travel and do things again and see our families and my heart just goes out you guys to all the people that have lost people due to this and because of people being so reckless and just like not only that obviously that wasn't everybody's story but like people that have lost family and friends to this Mm -hmm. um while you're seeing people not wear masks is just a slap in the face so my heart just really goes out to the people that have lost people and the frontline workers I mean I hope that we have some frontline workers by the time this episode comes out that listens that we can give some sort of like I don't know comedy or relief or something to like we are thinking of you and grateful for you for sure I like I don't think we could ever even put ourselves in your shoes and understand what's been happening over the last year so Mm-hmm. Yeah, just so much respect. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah, could not do what you're doing. <sighs> yeah. Well, I hope that we'll all be praying and hoping that you get to see your mom soon and that you Thank can you. Um, at least talk to her when you need to talk to her. But hopefully that you can touch her and hug her yes. <laughs> within the next like I don't know, maybe two months. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that hug is gonna last like ten years. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> you're gonna be like attached to her. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I'm not letting you leave my sight again, never again. <laughs> precious little baby yeah. what's her first name again leisha leisha we love yeah. you leisha it's so leisha and darlene need to have a little moment oh together, my gosh okay? though they're gonna be hanging out <laughs> at my at like both of our weddings because That's true. like your mom is 100 percent coming to my wedding anyway just because she's your mom <laughs> and like yeah they're just she's gonna my wedding have moments. date forever yes oh, i love it so much yeah they're gonna they're oh. gonna get along great but she yeah she's pretty pretty special my mom <laughs> Of course she is. We love. (sighs) Well, good therapy talk. Well, thank you. Oh, my God. That was a great (laughs) therapy talk. (laughs) I want to say thank you to everyone that's downloaded the show and listened to the show so far. This has been so great. And the response has been amazing. Um, Yeah, just keep it coming and let us know what you like and Don't tell us what you don't like. (laughs) Just kidding. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a dream. Yeah, we appreciate it so much. We have so much fun. So we hope you do too. We do. Okay, well, we'll see you for season two, you guys and gals. Have Have a a lovely evening or whenever you're, yeah, Yeah. week, whenever, you know. (laughs) All right. See you soon. Bye. There's a Parkinson Pals and there's also therapy too.